One thing that a lot of people take for granted, and specifically a lot of security companies take for granted, is radio microphones. All right, man, take a seat, buckle up. Ordinarily, we'd start with uh, orientation of the car here, but we got calls pending, and we got to get to them. So, we're rolling. We're going to have to learn on the way. Right, today, I set the car up. In an emergency, communication is always the first thing that breaks down, and having a good microphone for your radio is just as important as having a good radio and a good radio system and a good communication structure. I'm going to look at three different radio microphones and give you pluses and minuses of each one. This is the cheapest one. It's par mar low and it's by far the worst I've used. It worked for me as a cop for about a year before it broke in too many ways where I couldn't patch it up anymore. My agency actually gave this to me and then I went out and bought my own microphone uh, when I got tired of dealing with this one. The first thing I had a problem with it was I put it on my radio and there's inside you can see this little red button in there. There was a black piece of rubber over the top of this so when you pushed on the rubber it keyed up and the idea was you wouldn't have to go looking for your microphone. You could key up and yell and you could talk into it, which I guess is a decent idea if you're walking all day, but if you're sitting in a car, this thing would key up all the time because you'd be sitting on my belt and this would be clipped to my vest and I would accidentally push the button, you know, the seatbelt would push the button or my flashlight would push the button and my radio would key up. I'd get the huge squeak noise from inside the car from this radio picking up my car radio, picking up this radio and make a loop. It'd be making squeaking noises, plus I'd be sitting in my car with my other radio off and key up and then all of a sudden you've got you know two or three minutes of the radio in my car pumping music onto the airwaves and no one else can get on the air and dispatch is trying to call me. So that was the first problem I had with it. The second issue that I had with it was that the clip isn't really really strong and the rotation isn't very positive so it would rotate around on me and it would come off of my lapel. And even with a clip onto the lapel, this would pop off. This is actually when I uh, started the idea of taking a, a hair tie and attaching the microphone to my vest to keep it on there. Now it's just as a secondary for me, but at the time, this is what really caused it because this clip isn't really worth a whole lot. Finally, after about a year of using it, the button on the side broke. You can see how it's not, it's supposed, this is supposed to be parallel with the outside case of it and it's not. Half of it collapsed in, the button underneath broke, and then this thing just kind of became garbage after that. Uh, the one thing I did like about it was it made it really easy to use an earpiece jack for the earpiece. I think it's a two and a half millimeter jack for the earpieces on the head itself. So I could clip my earpiece in when I put it on for the day, wrap it around my ear, and then if for some reason the earpiece broke, I could just pull on this and it would work as a normal microphone again. Or if the earpiece you know, if this pop, if it popped out or the wire broke, for whatever reason, if it lost continuity with the earpiece, the microphone would just work as a normal microphone again. I didn't like that it doesn't have an antenna on it, which kind of limits its ability to be used if the car radio is broke, or if you don't have a car radio, it doesn't get very good reception because you're, the antenna is on the radio at your butt next to a metal door, and it doesn't, doesn't get out of the car as well as it normally would if it was up higher in the car. That was the Parmar Low. I, I priced these, I think they're like $35. So if you've got a Motorola like HT1000 or HT1250 or something like that, these come in those and it's a good cheap option if you've got nothing else. But the first thing I would do with it if you have to sit in a car all day is rip that button out because otherwise it's just gonna it's gonna drive you nuts. So that's the Parmar Low. This is the one that I well, one of the ones that I eventually bought. This is what I'm using right now because I haven't put my new one on there, My second, the second one of the new ones that I've gotten. Uh, this is a Motorola shoulder microphone that is a noise-canceling microphone, which uh, seemed like a good idea at the time. It actually ended up not being a good idea because where I work isn't normally a really loud environment. I used this in a train yard one time and it worked fantastic because there's, if you see on the back, I've got tape over it, there's a little hole and there's a microphone back there. And what the radio does is as you speak into the front, it cancels out from 
what it's record, what it's taking in and sending to the radio to transmit anything that this also picks up. So the problem with the noise canceling Motorola uh, non-public safety radio is that you have to talk really loud into the front because it's only going to transmit the stuff that the back one doesn't pick up too. Or you have to physically remove this from your shirt or from your lapel and speak directly into it. You can't do the kind of look down, key up and talk into it, or the look from the side, key up and talk at the microphone. You have to pull it off and put it directly in front of your face. My solution for that was to take a piece of uh, scotch tape, take a piece of scotch tape, put it over the back, and kind of cut off the end, and this muffles what comes in. So now... I paid extra for the noise canceling feature, but I'm not using it at all. It is a good, durable microphone. I mean, I fought with people and stuff and beat this off the ground. It works pretty well after I put the tape on it, and it's a little cheaper than the full-on public safety microphone, but it also doesn't have an antenna on top. I think it's an option with this one now, but it doesn't have an antenna on top, so it's got the same problem with the radio microphone being next to your butt and not transmitting out very well if your car radio is out or if you're stuck inside a building, it's not as... Or not if you're stuck inside a building, but if you're inside a vehicle, it doesn't transmit out as well because it's not as high up on you. Where the button was on the Parmar Low, this one has a 3.5 millimeter jack for an uh, earpiece, and it also has a 2.5 millimeter jack on the side of it for an earpiece, and it works the same way, where if, if you pull the earpiece plug out of this, it, uh, it works as just a normal microphone. It reverts back to the way it's designed to normally work without the earpiece, which is nice because then you're not out of communications because the earpiece breaks. The problem I have with plugging them in onto the three and a half millimeter jack is that this is threaded and it's all the way down here. And when it when it breaks off, the radio doesn't so the microphone and the radio don't sense that you've lost connectivity, and so you just are out of communications until you can take it off and unthread the jack. That's been my experience with it. So better, a good option. I think this this one ran me about ninety five dollars, and this is the one that I was using as of last week. But there's a better option out there. This is the Motorola, what they call the public safety microphone. It's the classic public safety microphone, the square body. You could, I mean, you could nearly pound nails with how strong this is. Um, and it has a bunch of features that for police or security or fire departments or EMS comes in really handy. Uh, the clip on the back is really positive. It stays where it's supposed to be. It's screw down construction, so it can actually be disassembled and, and fixed. My last one had to be fixed once before I bought another one. Uh, it has a antenna on the top of the microphone. So you put your little nubby antenna on the top of the microphone and you take the antenna off of your radio so you transmit higher up on your body. If you've ever worked in a really large area with a bad radio system you'll know how important that is so that's one way you can get around having a bad radio system this is the equivalent keeping it up is the equivalent of holding the radio over your head while you're transmitting it, it helps you transmit a little bit further because most of these are line of sight type uh, operations the button is enormous and it's very positive and it is protected so that it doesn't get keyed up accidentally you also don't have a button down here that is keying up accidentally while you're um, driving your car or whatever. It has a th it only has a three and a half millimeter threaded jack, which is the only thing I don't like about this. So when I use this, I have to not use the earpiece, which I'm kind of getting away from recently anyway. And with this, you don't necessarily need the earpiece because it, ha it has because it has my favorite feature of all, and that is the high low switch. With the high low switch, you don't have to turn up and down your radio to determine how loud the sound of the radio is coming out of the shoulder mic. So, for instance, sh turned all the way off, this microphone, you can hear everything. Turned all the way, I should say, turned all the way down with this microphone, you can hear everything that's going on on the radio. It's quieter, but it's definitely not quiet. You're not sneaking up on anybody with this on. With this one, same bit. With this, you turn the radio all the way down and, and flip the switch backward toward you and... The microphone barely, you barely hear anything coming out of it. You can still hear, but you have to hold this up to your ear to hear what's going on. You flip it forward, and it gets as loud as the other ones. So it helps you if you have to sneak up on someone or if you're in a very quiet environment. The high low switch really helps. 
One thing a lot of people really don't like about the classic public safety microphone that I think is awesome is the straight cord. Everybody likes this, this curly Q cord on their mics for whatever reason. It's, it's like Velcro, everybody, ooh, tactical, tactical curly Qs. The problem is I like to put my microphone behind my back or under my vest and this curly Q micro, uh, microphone cord kind of abrades between the vest and my skin. And when I sit on it, it's, it feels like there's something running down my back, because there is. With this, it's only a 24-inch cord, and it's straight, so it limits where I can send it. But once I send it, like I put it through and under my vest, it's not rubbing on me all day. Uh, I really like, I like this, the straight cord a lot more for that reason, and it's, it's more durable. I've seen the Parmar low cords just rip out of the bottom, and I've even seen the Motorola... Um, the non-public safety microphone ones, I've seen these ripped out of the bottom. I've never seen one with one of these. They just, I've noticed them being more durable. So it's again an example of, kind of like I've said, said before with holsters and with guns, you can either pay several times by spending $50 and then $100 to get less performance, or you can pay once when you're buying stuff. The only caution that I have of the Motorola public safety radio is that my original one, I got rid of it. It didn't stop working, but the rubber came off of the switch. I was afraid there would be water getting inside and out of an abundance of caution, I got rid of it and bought another one because it lasted me four years of using the switch constantly every day before the rubber cracked off and finally came off and I was just the last thing I want is to not have communications during an emergency. So I went and bought a new one and used this one in the meantime. So if you have to buy your own mic for a radio at work, I would just cut straight to the chase. If you have a Motorola radio, get the Motorola public safety microphone. If you have some other brand of radio, get the closest thing to this, the most durable microphone that you can because when it comes down to it this is what's going to be important is having communications with other people it's easy to say the job is about shooting guns and driving cars fast and and all of that but when we come down to it our job as public safety professionals is mainly about information management and one of our key links when we're managing information is our radio well, if you like that video, go ahead and subscribe because there's a whole lot more to come. As soon as I uh, finish up these calls, go 10-8. County 291. 291.